This is the new Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K LF, the first camera in their new flagship Ursa Cine lineup, and a camera which they say they've designed to be the best camera that they can currently make. Designed from the ground up for high-end productions with a revolutionary new sensor design, reimagined data workflow, and feature-rich physical design. On paper, this is the most powerful camera I've ever used. You know, the spec sheet for this camera is, it's just frankly ridiculous. Not only do we get 12K resolution, but we also get 8K and 4K in Blackmagic RAW using the full sensor. That by itself is fairly remarkable. But then you see the frame rate that this camera can do those resolutions at. Most 8K cameras struggle to get 8K 60p. Even RED, who have always been known for their frame rates, top out at 120p 8K DCI with the flagship V Raptor X. And that is impressive. But here, you can do 12K DCI up to 100 frames a second and 8K or 4K DCI up to 180 frames a second. And that's all with regular 17 by 9 aspect ratio. You crop into a thinner 2.35 to 1 ratio, and you can get even higher than that. All in full quality Blackmagic RAW, with no limits on which compression options you can choose from, and all with that large format sensor and incredibly high dynamic range. It has a real wow factor to it. Every customer I've spoken to about this camera so far or shown our test footage to has just been completely taken aback. There are no other cameras on the market which can do what this one can yet. Full stop. This is all down to the RGBW sensor design. This is a new reworking of the sensor inside the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. The move to full frame has made each pixel larger, lowering the noise floor and increasing the dynamic range as a result. Blackmagic are normally quite a careful and conservative company when quoting dynamic range, but here they quote 16 plus stops. And from what we've seen so far, this could be one of the best performing cameras on the market for dynamic range. We have a more in-depth video coming soon, which will show a range of tests in much more detail. But we didn't find a single part of the image which clipped while filming. Look at her hair here. Strong backlight from the sun on blonde hair and no clipping at all. Or here, inside this barn. With a bit of a grade, we can easily balance inside and outside. Nothing has clipped at all, either in the dark inside areas of the barn or that very bright sunny day outside. The footage from this camera just looks fantastic. Rich colors from the 12-bit RAW, amazing skin tones, low noise floor, and noise reduction works amazingly well on it as well inside Resolve, because of course all of this is RAW. And just look at how much detail we have from the 12K footage. The other big advantage of this RGBW sensor design is that it seems to be able to read the information off the sensor much faster. At its slowest, that's 12K 3x2 open gate, the readout speed is 12 milliseconds. Move over to DCI 12K and it's 9.7 milliseconds, or an amazing 5.4 milliseconds in 8K or 4K DCI. This fast readout speed is what enables the high frame rates as well. Here's a chart of what you can do in each sensor mode, and like I said in the beginning, it is so impressive. This is a big step up over what the rest of the industry can do. 100 frames a second in 12K, 180 in 8K or 4K, or 224 frames a second in 8K 2.35 to 1. And let's not forget, all of this slow motion is 12 bits Blackmagic RAW with the full sensor, so you're not compromising on image quality. It looks just as nice as the regular speed footage does. Because all of these resolutions and frame rates are available in all of those compression levels, Blackmagic have developed a new media system which they're calling the Media Module. This is one of the areas where I reckon I've seen the most misunderstanding amongst customers, which is fair enough, it's completely new. We're going to go into more detail again on our upcoming in-depth video, but essentially it's an 8 terabyte drive which comes with the camera. So when you buy this camera you get 8 terabytes of incredibly fast media included 
which is a real price saving compared to buying fast CF Express cards, for example. It is a very fast drive with lots of cooling built in. They do have a large media dock, which you can use as a card reader for three cards at the same time. But for most people, Blackmagic don't actually intend you to really ever take this drive out of the camera. Instead, to offload your footage, you can plug in over USB-C, which is easy, but a bit slow, or we can use the 10 gig ethernet port. We've been using this Sonnet Solo 10G, which gives our MacBook a 10 gig ethernet port one small Cat6 cable to connect it to the camera, and we were able to take off 780 gigabytes of footage in only 13 minutes. Although the outside of the camera looks very much like the Ursa Mini Pro at first glance, each area is actually mostly redesigned. There's a lot more ports, including lots of USB-C, two for viewfinders, and two for storage or internet tethering or powering accessories. There's two SDIs, two XLRs, and lots of power outputs as well. But the thing that most people will notice straight away is the screens. There's the articulating five inch touchscreen, which we're used to seeing on the Ursa Mini Pro design, and this can fold flat, which is nice. But then on the other side of the camera, there is another five inch touchscreen as well. This can do full camera control and show monitoring and exposure tools completely independently of the other displays or SDI ports. Plus, if you have a lens connected with Kukai protocol, you get a readout on screen of your lens information, focal length, iris, and even focus distance, which you can use to put marks on and then use to pull focus off. Then the two USB-C viewfinder ports can be used to connect either a Pixis monitor, which is a standalone five inch touchscreen, or the Ursa Cine viewfinder, which is a great viewfinder, which camera controls as well. There's a record button, false color, magnify, and three assignable function buttons all on the top of the EVF. Both of these just connect over the single locking USB-C cable, which sends video, power, and control. To power all of this, the camera ships with a B-mount battery mount on the back. You can swap this out for a V-lock battery, but doing that would limit you to no frame rates above 60p, which is a shame. If you aren't familiar with B-mount batteries, it's the new high voltage standard battery system, which is used on the latest ARRI cameras and a bit in lighting as well. So it's likely that a lot of customers for this camera won't already have B-mount batteries in their kit. So that might well be an extra expense you're gonna have to keep in mind if you don't want to be running off mains all the time. And of course you want those high frame rates. We've been using the SWIT B-mount battery system, which are really nice, very easy for us to recommend. This 160 watt hour battery, is gonna last you about two hours. We will go over all of this again in much more detail in our next video, which is gonna be a longer deep dive in each area of the Ursus Cine 12K LF. So keep an eye out for that one, hopefully coming soon. What this camera can do is pretty remarkable, really. The dynamic range, the frame rates, the first AC screen, the workflow, it's going to be very exciting to see which areas of the industry this finds itself in. It's a high-end camera, certainly the most high-end one that Blackmagic have ever made, and it competes very well with other high-end cameras out there, while in true Blackmagic fashion being far more affordable than its competition. Compare the price of the Ursa Cine 12K LF to the Red Raptor and Raptor X, Sony Venice, or of course anything which Ari make. You get a lot for your money here. There is a huge amount going for the Ursa Cine. Yes, there's its high 12K resolution, which is remarkable, but if you take this away, this is still one of the best 8K or 4K cameras that I've personally ever used. Put the camera into 4K and you get all of that dynamic range with the full sensor width in 12-bit RAW at 180 frames a second. There is no other camera on the market which can do that, let alone the 8K or the 12K modes. We've already had a lot of conversations with customers about this camera who are interested in it for all kinds of different work, certainly for narrative, but also for commercial work. This is a great camera to have as an in-house, a small studio or a production team, as a flagship production model, alongside maybe other smaller documentary-focused cameras. There's a lot going on with this camera. 
So we're gonna make a longer form, in-depth video to really put this to its test, compare it to other cameras like the Venice 2, see what this thing can really do. So wait for that if you want to know more about this, but if you want to know more in the meantime, and you wanna try it out for yourself, this is our demo unit. You are more than welcome to come down into the Pro-V showroom and spend some time getting to use it, testing out for your own production needs. Just get in touch with our sales team or head over to the website. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.